shed guy here. This is my uh, Pratt Bernard EC multi size collet holder. Uh, we're going to make a hard stop to go inside here. Uh, up inside here, inside the bore, there's a lip. And on the back end, there's a stop. So, what we're going to do. We're going to take, I'm going to make a piece up, this is my drawing, so that it slips into the bore, little spring plungers engage into the little, uh, there's a little groove. And then I already have a 5C collet stop. It's got a little Allen key that grips the rods. And I've got a series of rods that fit into it. And they're on a 5 16th diameter. Seems as I didn't go to eBay this time. I went to, uh, well, whoever these boys are. But anyway, good deal. Reet. All right, so somewhere in this here lump of metal is what we're looking for. So we've uh, set up the collet. I'm going to take a few thou off and sneak up on the uh, on the fit. Right. So there's the bore of the uh, collet holder. And that's a right nice fit. But as I fitted in, I'm still getting a bit of scratching on here, which is from the little openings where the uh, chuck key comes in. But if I put my finger inside, the chuck key's not getting near to that. So what I'm going to do, I've stoned it with a round stone and some emery. I'm going to see if I can bring uh, a grinder in through the hole and pull it backwards to polish. Huh. I've just adapted stone for the uh, Dremel. We're getting closer. We'll bring that down a bit in diameter and then stone that out. Looking good exit. Okay, so uh, turns out the trick to this is to hold the collet and tighten by turning the, uh, the Dremel. clean it within an inch of its life. Right, so I've super cleaned that out, including the little holes it go through and all the rest. Now that piece drops in perfect. So yeah, that was, that little ease well worth doing. And it's surprising because the key doesn't get deep enough in here To, to cause it upset, but anyway, there we go. On 
unless somebody's been putting a big bar in here and tightening it with another bar in the chuck. Yeah, that's what they've done, isn't it? Put a big bar in, wrong size bar, and really wallowed on it. Well, there we are. We uh, reconvene at the mill. I've set my uh, collet holder sort of parallel to the table. I've put uh, a centre finder in the mill. And the centre in the collet. So I know I'm on centre now. We're going to uh, set the piece up. So the collet index has got a little key that locks into that collet. Tighten it up at yon end. And this bar will start to tighten on. Put the work in. Move that out of the way. There you go. That's that's really got a good grip now. Okay, so that will now index round, uh, depending on where I've set the stops, which you can't remember. Oh, there's a high likelihood here of oh God, that's tight. being at home to Mr. Bozo. So we're going to uh, set the stops. Right, so I've gone 4.4 millimetres and I've cheated and used my gauge there. So, there's your zero. I want one, two, three and I want the pin to drop on that one four <laughs> so I unscrew the stop till it hits the ring four One, make sure that one's screwed in, two, three, okay, so we're just going to put some flats on. Right, rather than uh, milling it out, I'm going to drill it, then mill it. So there's a little stack block. Set a quill stop and use this basically as a drill press. So this is uh, great fun. If you've got an excuse to buy a Hardin's HRV, uh, use it, it's very nice. So, set stops, we've got it all chocked up, we're in a collet. Yeah, that's smooth. So, I need to uh, put the relief in for the collar on the spring. So there's a little collar and it should be eight and a half millimeter. I've got a nine and a half millimeter cutter. That's life. Uh, screw the cutter into it stops. 
unscrew the collar half a turn, screw the cutter back, and that's locked. Right, now we're going to set the uh, depth of cut, which is not much, about a millimetre. Right, so uh, we've got a hole, we've got a relief area. Base it in. Right, so very funny, I uh, put the holes in the wrong place, but on the positive side, um, when I pushed into the bore, it, it was engaging and going too far down anyway. So. Again, we set the step stop to uh, 400. Off we go. With the, with the HRV, you definitely need this bit. You see a lot of units without that on. Well, that really does make for good, quick, indexing it's on threes and four so three six twelve type thing right we've uh, we've done all our depth so set it on like a drill press I'm just gonna go around quickly get the handle out of the way that's probably what happens to a lot of handles isn't it drop it down this to travel for a millimetre so I don't need much clearance here okay just setting the uh, depth of cut there that's going to give me a nice millimetre Again, I'm sort of thinking sod it, I'll do it with the, uh... oh, oh. yeah, there's not much space is there, okay that's one surround, and you can see we put the ball in to check it, get in. Okay, so that was a quick one round. We are way quicker that time. Number one. Okay, so we've been on the lathe. We've got a nice sliding fit. Um, you can see how close the holes had been when I made it the wrong way around. They weren't right. We increased the length to 7.4 millimeters from the edge in for that center. Turns out it's really picky, the height these get set at. If they're a little bit high, the sides foul the bore and the whole thing just locks up solid. So I'm going to glue them one by one with Araldite metal. All right, so here we go. I'm just, oh, I'm not great with glue. So just a little bit of glue at the top end. I'm not getting any glue inside the ball bearing.
So I'm making sure at the outside edges it's pressed right in. Okay, so while I was waiting for the uh, glue to set, I re-measured from the inside and found that that stop is a quarter of an inch. So the stop's a quarter of an inch in, it's a quarter of an inch in, so I've just adjusted the position of those balls to just past a quarter of an inch. Well, uh, I would dearly like this to fit, wouldn't I? Seems as it's the end of the day and all. So that does go with a positive clonk. Nice. We're back at the mill and the plan now is to drill through uh, the boss and just make a little captive nut where the cap head bolt from this side pulling onto uh, a captive nut on the other side so it just engages the outer diameter of my rod so I'm just sneaking up on it I'm going to come as close as I can. This will rotate. This is my clearance drill. I've set the offset from center for the hole, the depth in. While we're at it, I'll set a stop. It's close quarters, but we've got clearance. We're going to baby it because it's wanting to kick off towards me. That's well choked up. So that one's... It's not an end cutter. This one's an end cutter. Two flute end cutter. So I'm going to put the end cutter on and just tidy that up. Okay, well, it all started flying around a bit with the uh, with the end cutter. So I've just tighten the chuck up, as you do. And I thought, right, I'm going to put a centre in. Still wanting to jig around. tailstock I'm using is a, it's a vertex tailstock, it's very adjustable, um, rather nice actually. That's your Tom Senior one, this is a Tom Senior uh, dividing head, but the points are really quite small, it wouldn't engage that larger hole on there. So alas, the Tom Senior doesn't cut the mustard today. Okay, we're choked right down yet again. Uh, I've got a little stubby in there, four millimeter stubby. And we're just going to baby it along. We've extended that, uh, that drilling the chuck, far as we're there. I'll come out yon side. Uh, it's just kicking off now. Right, through. I don't need a clearance drill because that's smashing. Right, I'll just uh, I'll just do the clearance for that head again. Yeah, that <laughs> that one's the wrong size. So the next size up I've got that size. 
which is Mahusiv. Okay, so looks like 7.5 millimeters. So I've got concerns about this cutter moving. I've screwed it in. I'm coming back half a turn. I screwed it up, tightened it. That's rock solid. Brilliant system. Okay, so what this is going to do now, that collar, we've got the drawbar in, the drawbar's holding tight. And now the collar is rammed up against the base. So that should be absolutely solid. A little bit more. Right, this, I don't have to bury it completely. I've got plenty of clearance as this goes through. So I'm going to call it squits. Happy with that. Right, flip it and make a hole for the retentive uh, captive nut. We're now where the through hole came up. And now we're going to make a 10 millimeter hole so the plan here moving the table i'm going to bring a 10 millimeter cutter to half the height and half the width so half the, half the height of the hole in the end and half the width so i'll set my stop there Choke the whole unit up. Cut as far as I dare with the tail stock in. Taking the tail stock out, eyeballed it, and I reckon I'm halfway through on whatever diameter that is. So here's my uh, drill hole going through. Moving on, uh, I'm going to make a piece of uh, brass to fit the hole. I've deburred it now. So a piece of brass to fit that hole. Uh, I've got a set of little bally doobries, which you've got a little adjuster on the end, which pushes the balls in and out, and you can take a ball. So it's a little bore gauge. I find measuring really <laughs> difficult. So what I'm going to do is uh, get a rough measurement, turn it down on the lathe, sneak up on it. It's a nice little set. It, it, you can't get snap gauges down into small holes. And these just cover very narrow ranges so turn that down on the lathe it's a nice fit now we'll transfer punch it and tap it transfer punch I'm going to make it so that I drill this hole and then I can just 
come dead opposite that hole and take um, take the scoop out of it. What I'm doing here is making sure that I'm tracking along the center line which it looks like I am I'm going to pop my hole there lock it, lock it stubby center drill and now we'll drill it and tap it I'm drilling on like crazy and uh, an imperial drill it's a dormer drill um, it's soft stuff isn't it so i'll see if i can tap that if i can't then i'll go up to the correct metric uh, tap size tip, tip. so just threading this brass mm -mm -mm. i hear you squeaking Right, so uh, there you go. We're going to, uh, we've set a stop. All right, we'll see, uh, see how we did. There you go, we've taken a decent chunk off. We can cut this back until this gives us the right amount of grip. So I'm thinking I'll deburr that and then have a look at it. Okay, and, uh, there's my piece. It's coming in. Right, I've uh, put a cap head in there and if I loosen it, my bar moves, nip it. We're tight so we've got success there brilliant now what i'll do is i'll lop this off right uh we've tidied that up a bit push it in Satisfying, isn't it? And then you can measure off this with your, you know, with a gauge rod. But well, that'll set your back stop. And in theory, I can do that with the thing mounted. And just pull it out. So, wonderful. Okay. That's, uh, that was the project today. This one... It was a project that I just did last last time. So uh, there we are. So two different stops. So in the end, I was uh, one seven. Ninety-two. Uh, going across the balls, I came out at uh, one nine hundred. So, a uh, little bit of top shelf material for you now. I went on eBay and brand new, unused. Collets. Yeah, it tells you all about them. But it's soaking just in paraffin. And there's the original information sheet from a Pratt Burner collet. It says soak in paraffin, so I have done. And there you go. 
after a week in the good stuff and then a bath in dock oil pretty much as good as it goes a little bit of corrosion just strangely where the protective cardboard rings had sat on the uh, on the cart itself so they probably attracted a little bit of moisture They move easily, and they're tight. Right, I'm done. Thank you for watching. Shed Guy, over and out.